Okay, in this video, we're going to quickly flip through the limit laws section of our calculus textbook. I don't plan to focus too much on this or, or, or work any limit laws problems. The reason is because this course is designed for people who are trying to get an A in their calculus class, pass their calculus class, or someone who's working as an engineer or a scientist and wants to study calculus again so they can they can master the concepts and, and, and apply them in their job. What I have found is that the, the limit laws are more for mathematical proofs. So if, if you're working a limit and you want to, for each step, state the exact theorem you're using to do that step to prove what you're doing, and to me that's more for like mathematicians, to evaluate any limit. So if you're given any function and asked to evaluate the limit, whether on a test or, or in real life, but you're not asked to to prove each one of your steps. You're just asked to solve the limit. Probably the main idea you need to remember is that if a function is continuous, at least continuous over the region that, that you're evaluating the limit, then you can just plug in the limit value into the function and the answer you get, that's the limit. But if the function isn't continuous, so if you have an infinite, one of the, one of the three types of discontinuities, an infinite discontinuity, a removable discontinuity, or a jump discontinuity, and the video is where we're, where we're actually solving limits or the graphical limits video. Both teach you how to deal, how, how to interpret limits at discontinuities. There's also the, hot, the, the situation where the function oscillates, which I think is also a type of discontinuity. But we talk about all of that. So with those skills, you can, you can analyze, solve, interpret, get the answer to any limit problem. But again, but you're, you're still not officially proving what you're doing Everything you're doing is backed up by what, what's taught in, the, in this section, the limit laws. Again, I, if you're not a mathematician, I don't think you need to memorize this or, or really learn this, but I still want to flip through this section real quick just, to, just so you can take a look. So, so it, it, it talks about how in the, in the previous section, we were using calculators and graphs to guess the value of, of, of the limits. That's, when, that's in the video where we were we were just introduced to limits, and so we were just trying to get a feel for, for how they worked, and so we were guessing values of limits, but we saw that just, just guessing wasn't reliable. Sometimes we would, the, the calculators would have rounding errors, and there were different things that happened to where we, we needed more definitive rules that people could use universally, and so that's, that's what this is about, and so here's the main limit laws that a lot of different that a lot of other laws are, are developed, developed from these. So you can see, you can, you know, limit of f of x plus g of x is the limit of f of x plus the limit of g of x. And you can subtract, take out a constant. You can, if you got a product, you can just separate the product. Same, same with, you can also do, um, you can, if you're dividing two functions, you can just apply the limit to the numerator and denominator. And they've got a bunch of examples. They work examples of doing this. Then they establish some more rules using the, the, those, those, those original five rules. And yeah, like, like so, so this here, the, the limit as x approaches a of c is equal to c. We talk about this in, in I think, the, the first problem we do in the beginner level difficulty limit problems. So you, you, as x approaches a, you have a function, and the function is c y is equal to c so it's just a straight a horizontal line so as x approaches a what is the function y is equal to c approaching well it's continuous y is equal to c is continuous for all x so you just it, it plug it in it's not i guess you could say plug it in but the function y is equal to c for all x is equal to c and then that makes intuitive sense and we talk about that in, in the example problem but you know they go through all of this this officially you know, like the, um, you've got the nth root of f of x, the limit of, as x approaches a of the nth root of f of x, you can just put the limit inside and say the limit as x approaches a of f of x, and then take the nth root of that. We do example problems like this, and we also, in the continuity video, we talked about how you can take a really complex limit that seems almost impossible to evaluate, but limits are easy to work with in the sense that you can just focus on small areas of the variable and see what that approach is and, and then just go to each spot and then combine it all. Okay, here's more examples. 
the direct substitution property. If f is a polynomial or a rational function and a is in the domain of f, then the limit is x versus a of f of x is equal to f of a. They'll build on this, and this is the reason is because the polynomials and rational functions are continuous in their domains, right? So other than other than where you plug something in and it's, and it's it doesn't exist. Like you can't divide by zero. So you can't, there's no, if you're dividing by zero, there's no, you, there's no, the function doesn't exist. There's no F of A, but if it's continuous and polynomial or rational functions are continuous everywhere in their domains, then just plug it in. And that's for all, that they'll develop this, but that's for any continuous function, which is all of the normal functions we deal with are continuous in their domains. And again, for like non-continuous functions, like uh, piecewise functions, we talk about, we talk about how to deal with that. Okay, here's more examples. Okay, they give more examples. We know this property if um, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l only if the left and the right hand limits also equal l. More examples. We're going to work all kinds of examples like this. Greatest integer function. We'll work an example like this. So the squeeze theorem, this is where we're introduced to the squeeze theorem. So I think this is, a, so we've got limit problems videos where we do beginner, intermediate, and advanced level difficulty. This is pretty tough, I think, the squeeze theorem. This might be even, you know, more difficult than, than the advanced problems. So, so I might do a, a, a single video that does one or two squeeze theorem problems. I think it's easy, it's pretty easy to interpret. I'll go over it real quick, what, what, you know, an example on the squeeze theorem, but... You know, it's just kind of hard to recognize a problem from scratch as, as, as being able to apply the squeeze theorem. I think that's what's hard about it. But so, so what is this? This is, you first look at this, this theorem here. So if f of x is less than or equal to g of x when x is near a. So, so the, when it says the function, so it's for all x, for all g, for any x and for any g, you plug in f of x is less than or equal to g of x when x is near a except possibly at A, and the limits of F and G both exist as X approaches A, then the limit as X approaches A of F of X is less than or equal to the limit as X approaches A of G of X. Okay, and I think that makes that makes sense. That's pretty intuitive. I think this is just, again, this is really mathy stuff where they have to, they have to state things that seem obvious just for the sake of definitive, definitively arguing what they're saying or what they're trying to claim. Okay, and then the squeeze theorem is saying if f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, for all x that when x is near a except possibly at a, and the limit as x is approaches a of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x, and it's equal to some a number l, then the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to l. So okay, so f of x for all x along the interval that we're considering except possibly at a f of x you see is always less than h of x for any for any x you plug in and you also have the case that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x and it's equal to a number then since g of x is for all x within that interval except possibly at a is less than or equal to h of x but also greater than or equal to f of x for all x in that interval this has to be the case that the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to a. Okay, so how do you use that? All right, so they give an example here. Show that, show that the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine of 1 over x is equal to 0. And then they note that we can't do the, you know, you might say, well, let's just do the property where we separate the two, right? So take the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 1 over x. Yeah, that, that, would, that could work. But this doesn't exist. So you, you, so that doesn't mean the limit doesn't, it, the limit could not exist, but you, you, you can't say for sure. So we apply the squeeze theorem. And so, and so with the squeeze theorem, the limit you're trying to solve for, you, you, you want to put in the middle. The limit that, you, so the, our limit here, we're gonna, we want to, that's going to be g of x. So we need to find a function that's smaller than, g of, than our g of x and a function that's bigger than it. So to do this, we use our knowledge of the sine function because the sine of any number lies between minus 1 and 1. We can write that. You get the sine of any number, no matter what it is. The, so the sine of 1 over x for all x is somewhere between 1 and negative 1. We know that. And then any inequality, it remains true when multiplied by a positive number. 
If it's a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. So if we multiply, to, so to create our g of x, if we, let's multiply by x squared here. Well, let's multiply the, so we don't change the inequality, 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 let's multiply the entire, this entire inequality by x squared, and we get this. So there's our function that we're, look, that we're trying to solve for, and then we've got two, two functions that, are, that satisfy our, our squeeze theorem setup, x squared and minus x squared. Okay, so now, okay, we've got this first step, so, so is this next step true? The limit as x approaches a of x squared is equal to zero, okay? The limit as x approaches zero of minus x squared is also equal to zero. So they're both equal to L. So there you go. So that means this.